A fast-moving brush fire has prompted an evacuation of an Oakland neighborhood and damaged at least four structures. At least 80 firefighters were battling the eight-acre blaze in the Oakland Hills and state crews have arrived to help, the Oakland Fire Department said. Video recorded by the fire shows helicopters dousing the flames. The fire comes as forecasters have issued red flag warnings for fire danger until Saturday from the central coast through the San Francisco Bay Area and into northern Shasta County, not far from the Oregon border. It was not immediately clear what caused the Oakland blaze. The fire department ordered people in two streets, Campus Drive and Crystal Ridge Court, to evacuate. No injuries have been reported. A California utility shut off power in 19 counties in the northern and central part of the state as a major, Diablo wind, notorious in autumn for its hot, dry gusts spiked the risk of power lines sparking a wildfire. About 16,000 customers were without electricity Friday after Pacific Gas and Electric shut off power. The Diablo wind is forecast to cause sustained winds reaching 35 miles per hour in many areas, with possible gusts topping 65 miles per hour along mountaintops, according to the National Weather Service. The strong winds are expected to last through part of the weekend. Germany honored U.S. President Joe Biden for his contribution to transatlantic relations on Friday, ahead of his meetings with European allies on Russia's war in Ukraine and the conflict in the Middle East. Biden received the highest class of Germany's Order of Merit, which was also bestowed on former U.S. President George Bush for his support of German reunification. German President Frank-Walter Steinmeier pointed to Biden's interest in Germany going back more than four decades. He said the friendship with the U.S. is and will always be existentially important for Germany, but there have always been times of proximity and greater distance. Even recently, just a handful of years ago, the distance had grown so wide that we almost lost each other, Steinmeier said, in an allusion to tense relations during Trump's earlier presidency. He said Biden restored Europe's hope in the transatlantic alliance literally overnight. Biden thanked German leaders for their role in helping Ukraine against the Russian invasion. We cannot let up, he said. We must sustain our support, in my view, we must keep going until Ukraine wins a just and durable peace. Biden didn't want his term to end without visiting Berlin, after having been to visit other key allies such as Japan, South Korea, France, India, the United Kingdom, Poland and Ukraine. Biden plans to meet later Friday with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. Biden and Scholz will later meet with French President Emmanuel Macron and UK Prime Minister Keir Starmer before the US President jets home late Friday afternoon. Biden and Scholz plan to discuss next steps in Ukraine and developments in Israel and Gaza after the killing of Hamas leader Yehya Sinwar.
They also intend to touch on Lebanon and Iran, and coordinate their approaches to China as well as their respective industrial and innovation strategies. The pair are also set to talk about the development of artificial intelligence and renewable energy resources. And yet in this friendship there have been and always will be times of proximity and greater distance, times of agreement and times of discord. Even recently, just a handful of years ago, the distance had grown so wide that we almost lost each other. But, but ladies and gentlemen, throughout the ups and downs of time, there have been people who have stood by the transatlantic relations no matter what. And chief among those people, Mr. President, is you. Most precious to them because they feel frustrated, tired, alienated. The choice on November the 5th is only Americans' choice to make. But we as Europeans have a choice too. We have the choice to do our part, to be unwavering in our support for Ukraine, to invest in our common security, to invest in our shared future, and as you have done, sir, to stand by the transatlantic alliance no matter what. We had a very difficult winter. We cannot let up. We must sustain our support. In my view, we must keep going until Ukraine wins a just and durable peace consistent with the UN Charter. Until once again, human dignity prevails. 